Welcome to AHA, a human among humans. I have with me one of the best humans I've ever met. Thank you. Um, her name is Michelle Scow. We both just went to a, and my name is Michael Coran. We both just went to Rogue Conference Center in Western Massachusetts to hear an herbalist, Rosemary Gladstar. Yeah. And Michelle yeah. took notes and has a, a memory like a vice and is going to share with us some of the things we learned about this show will help you be healthier and happier and avoid things like common colds and and struggle against other ailments successfully. I put a salve on my wounded knee, it felt much better. Things you can take in the morning every day to help your health through the day. But Michelle mm -hmm. is now going to show us some things and tell us some things. Okay. <clears throat> well, first, um, we can share maybe where Rowe Conference Center is located uh, in about two and a half hours, except Friday traffic <laughs> makes it more like three and a half hours um, uh, in Western Mass. And um, so Rosemary Gladstar was uh, the person we saw who is really a, a famous um, herbalist. And um, I can show you a quick picture of her website. Her website is um, Sage Mountain, and she's written a lot of books. And um, she's had one this. Of them. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of her books, and um, this is her website here. Um, and she's run this uh, place, Sage Mountain uh, Retreat Center. Um, and she grows herbs on there. 500 wilderness acres in central Vermont. It's just amazing. Um, she's a real advocate for sustainability with herbs and is associated with um, uh, I forget the organization, but basically they uh, plant savers. Um, so a real awareness of the sustainability and being aware of what you're taking and, and taking care of the herbs um, and plants. Well, and one, ex our... one example is golden seal, which I love to take and it really helps yeah. when the cold is coming on to take such herbs as golden seal, echinacea, and golden seal in the wild is, is disappearing. Mm -hmm. And so, because it's being cultivated and sent over to Europe. Yes, I and believe. other places. Yeah. And so she wants, if you <clears throat> use golden seal, she would like you to use cultivated golden seal and not wild golden seal. Yeah. And this and actually is helping preserve plants, just like people are working to preserve animal species. Yeah, and I would love to get that up there, but I guess I don't have that right away, so we won't be doing that. Um, yeah, so I thought we would start by, well, first of all, the wonderful way that the workshop started was going around and each participant sharing what herb they were currently in love with, um, which I think is a wonderful start. So maybe you and I could share just the first thing that comes to mind when asked that question, because we've been inundated this weekend. And um, so maybe what we started off the weekend being in love with might not be quite the same. No. But, um, would you like to share maybe um, what comes to mind? Well, it was a room of about 28 women and one other man beside me. Mm -hmm. So I felt, and they were talking about things I didn't know, which is why I came. But most everybody else 
or everybody else knew more than me. So when they asked your favorite herb, I said, oregano, I put it on my melted cheese in the evening. And people laughed. It wasn't intended to be funny. One woman said, name was from, she was from Arlington, said it was one of the funniest things she's ever heard. So that's how I, I introduced myself to the community. <laughs> yeah, and what, um, for me, I share um, dandelion root because I've just been enjoying drinking it um, around 10 o'clock or around 2 o'clock when I just have a craving for sugar um, and the bitter seems to help wow. with that. How do you how do you how do you eat it? So I I do it two ways. One is um, the root dandelion or dandelion tea. Actually, I should say dandelion tea that I is the traditional medicine tea that you get. I think at Whole Foods. And so I have two thermoses, and um, one I put that tea in. And then I add a little bit of soy milk and a little bit of agave. <laughs> and then uh, in my other thermos, I put in the powder that I got at Life Alive, actually, um, that is a dandelion mix. I think it has chicory. Yes. Um, so I put a little soy milk. Sometimes I put a sweetener and sometimes I don't. Uh, but it's very nourishing, It's I think, because it gets me to drink liquid, mm. uh, so that's nourishing. But I think that the dandelion itself is so, it's definitely, it's a bitter and it's grounding. Um, and it is hearty. You cannot get rid of them. She showed us. Yeah. It, it just got, you try to get rid of yeah. your dandelion supposedly to have a beautiful dandelion free lawn. It will come back. Yeah. It's my kind of herb. Yeah, even with the pesticide. Yes, it, it's it stronger than ortho, she said. Yeah, mm -hmm. and outside our, when we just walked out our, where we stayed. Oh, you saw there them, There were yeah. just so many dandelion leaves on the ground. Yeah, and someone shared how she had a particular experience with a plant that just was so healing for her. Um, particularly, it was a very profound experience for her when she put her arms around, uh, I think it was Alyssa Hyssop, or Alisa uh, Hyssop, I think is what it was. I'm not clear about that. But um, it was, you know, definitely a profound experience for her. So I just think that opening line about your relationship with the plant, and um, I, you know, for some people, someone at at the um, workshop shared how some shamans really work more with plant spirits than animal spirits and that how sometimes they will, you know, that you might dream of a plant and um, then it's good to try to use it, but that it can have a healing relationship uh, for you, um, which I, I do believe that. and. It was great to just be reminded of that. And so, I mean, we evolved with plants where it's a, it's a uh, interdependent relationship through time and we need plants. And actually we breathe in the oxygen that they emit and they breathe in the carbon dioxide. Um, so that's, you know, that's one example. But I everything we eat everything. is reliant on plants. Yeah, we're really um, always eating plants. Mm -hmm. Even if yeah. we eat, if we eat um, hamburgers, mm -hmm. cows have eaten grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, it's the great sacrifice that they give their lives. Um, uh, you know, I often, when... Uh, Anyways, they give they give our lot their lives for us to live. So that's that is the great sacrifice. And um, you know, we often like to have purpose um, in our lives, just like 
you know, the plants probably like to have purpose and... Or a carrot. Right? Um, a carrot's a plant. Yeah. I can't and wait till Michelle eats me and I can contribute <laughs> to her well-being. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So anyhow, um, that was a neat way to start and, and also just the history of how long herbalism has been around, um, which she claimed uh, was the oldest. Where Except for that? one. There's Let's one see. tradition that's old, do you oh, remember? I gave that to them. Um, yeah, touch, healing touch. Healing touch is older. But this is the second oldest healing tradition. It's, you know, oral tradition is over 5,000 yeah. years. And written, I mean, written is over 5,000 years. And the oral tradition is at least, I think, 30,000 years ago they were. Mm -hmm. um, Homo sapiens were healing with plants. Yeah, and 82% of the world's population still practices herbal medicine as their primary, not their secondary system of healing. 82%. And so they know that these plants, mm -hmm. or they've experimented in time, maybe they had experimenters. Okay, Michelle. Go and eat some plants and tell us which ones are good for us. Maybe that's how they learned. Well, maybe they yeah. felt, maybe they even felt that a certain plant. Well, I think that, and that's kind of what Rosemary Gladstar was advocating was to be in constant checking with your relationship to what's going on when you're using an herb. Um, and different herbs will speak to different people and be more effective. And even to check the quality of an herb to trust, you know, well, to just be empowered. Um, it, there's been a lot of disempowerment with the allopathic system of medicine where you, you know, it's kind of ha handed over into the hands of someone else thinking which sets up a dynamic that they know more about you than you know yourself. Um, and this is um, a little bit more empowering to constantly, you know, be checking in with, is this working? I mean, you do that with allopathic, but still there's, it is empowering when you know which herbs you can try yourself. Um, and also you might be able to afford it easier um, you know a little, it can get very expensive but again if you can particularly if you can grow it yourself uh -huh. um, yes. you know that's where you it's probably not quite as expensive but you can get away with you know a lot that isn't so expensive so and and she kind of advocated that a lot of chronic conditions particularly might might benefit um, from herbal uh, approaches. Um, so anyways, we can kind of um, start with, well, chronic conditions and also simple everyday things like nausea, colds, flus, um, earaches, with those sort of things. Yes, if you, if you, if, especially in this season, mm -hmm. winter coming on, if I do this, it really works. I was so dumb that I didn't realize that these herbs, which I bought in the store, really grew in the ground. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh wow, <laughs> thank you, Cambridge Naturals <laughs> or Whole Foods. Yeah, well, that's what's really cool to get to know, you know, it just. To have more of a relationship with the earth and and to really you know, yes I yeah. so I'm, I'm just beginning so it's lovely to feel that the plants and the earth are, are there to help us and keep us well yeah some people felt that sometimes herbs pop up around your house oh when you need them of the ones yes in particular Sing. that you need oh, so like the internet. Then they know you need a sleeping bag. They'll send ads. Mm. <laughs> so this concoction. That's questionable. Yeah. This concoction, and Michelle, you've mm -hmm. you've had it too. 
Mm -hmm. um, to fight cold. This is a practical television show. This will often really work. And it's really helpful the first day you feel a cold coming on. The first day I feel a cold coming on. I have a little bag of echin two kinds of echinacea root. Something like August. Augusta folia. Like, wow, and she is so good. <laughs> wow. I mean, how many of us would remember? We're going to test you. Augusta folia. That's one form of echinacea, which is a plant that grows in many places, right? Yeah, but that is a little more. Here. That's a little more endangered than the purpura. Oh, the purpura. One. You remember that I don't, too. It has more of a name than what I'm saying. No, you're very close. But the Nisha purpura. Yeah, the purpura you can grow much. It's easier to grow yourself, and it's much more prolific. But the Augustifolia one is, and she felt they were probably both. She thought the Augustifolia might be a little stronger, but that given the bigger perspective of that, it's probably just as well the purpura. I use um, both. Okay. I put them. I both. I use them both. And you get them at Cambridge Naturals. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. And. I used to use a tincture that had echinacea in it. Mm -hmm. They went out of business. The, I think it was Unum or something, yes? Is that the name of the company? Yeah, I remember yes. what you mean. And then I, since it went out of business, I didn't get any more tinctures. But she said a tincture can be more effective even than the tea. And that I could. So in the future, I'm going to take a tincture, as I did for many years, a tincture that has echinacea in it, both forms of echinacea, purpura mm -hmm. and august, augustifolia, that's not quite right. Augustifolia. Augustifolia. And garlic, fresh mm -hmm. garlic, and a golden seal. Mm -hmm. I buy them, there can be little round balls. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Oh yeah, a little cayenne. And I put in a little oregano, raw oregano, which might be a, a, a too much strong taste to it. And the day you have a cold, and it's important, I didn't know this, it still worked for me. Rosemary said every two or three hours for the whole day, right? to have this tea mm -hmm. and this tincture the first day or two of, the, of a cold is really important. One or two hours again and again. And so um, thanks for watching and you'll see this works for many, many people um, if you have, if have a, when you catch a cold coming on. It did work this week for, for me. Michelle had a cold and I was afraid I caught it and I used this concoction and I could feel my body fighting it. What the echinacea does is it, it inspires your white blood cells. Come on guys, come on, no sleeping in winter, get to work. And it, it really inspires them to get out and do their job. Yeah, yeah, she was saying, um that using the tincture with the alcohol in it, if you can tolerate the alcohol. Is this the echinacea? Yeah, it is, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so that's one Wonderful. example. Can we make, make it bigger? Um, not really. Um, so. Well, let's look at it a little bit longer, can we? Yeah, I'm gonna find other pictures. Oh. Um, so, essentially, um, She was saying that the the alcohol tincture for people that can tolerate it, not everyone, like kids, it might not be so good for people that, who are alcoholic or have liver issues. Um, a tincture in alcohol might not be so great. But, but you could do it in apple cider, is that true? Yeah, you can get other 
tinctures that are um, in a cider, glycerin apple or cider, cider, cider vinegar. Can you make apple cider vinegar as a tincture? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What the tincture does, Michelle can tell you maybe a weekend. What does the tincture do when you put the... How the so, um, the tinct, the alcohol, so it's great in a situation when you feel like you're going to be getting a cold and susceptible to that. So you can um, take it every two hours and really it's great because the alcohol uh, facilitates it in the bloodstream rapidly. And it breaks it down into its basic components. That when you put the um, um, the herb, the oh, it extracts the um, constituents. It, yes, it gets the, the, the gets the es, the the healing properties. properties of the echinacea, breaks it down so it could really go into your bloodstream. Yeah, yeah, and so the reason why that particular method of administration is good is because you want rapid. Uh, help and it mo helps mobilize the white blood cells um, to mobilize and act. Yes. Um, There's a war on, everybody's drafted. Yeah. yeah. Let's so get the, those viruses. Yeah, so the echinacea and, and the golden, golden seal is very powerful, antiviral and um, so that's why it's good to take it, even though on the bottle it might say take it every like I don't know, three times a day or twice a day. Yeah. That really she advocates that you take it every one to two hours, um, like a quarter or a half a teaspoon, which is pretty much a dropper full. Um, if you can't tolerate the tincture itself. Oh, a whole dropper full, huh? I think she said wow. that, yeah, half to a quarter teaspoon. Yes. Wow. Whatever it is, you put it, yeah. you can see, but I think that's what it is. And... If you can't tolerate it straight up, which some people find that unpalatable, then you can uh, put it in water or, you know, uh, mix it with something sweet in your water, tea, or, you know, whatever you're drinking. Um, but you can also just do it straight um, as well. So, and she talked, I wanted to talk no, about ahead. how you yeah. can make your own tincture. We, we, have, we have two minutes in this show and then we're oh going to be, gosh. We're gonna be yeah, back. So we're going to be back on Michael Max. show. Yeah, that's perfect. So we can talk quickly about how you can make your own. Um, so she, really, if you're just going to do the basic way, you would get the, ideally the root, the leaf, and the flower, and the bud, if you can. If you can't, if you can just get the root, that's fine. Um, she suggests ideally that you make this tincture throughout the whole season of the summer where you grow maybe five plants of echinacea and you harvest a few buds and you put it in um, the alcohol tincture where you cover it about two, two inches above and you agitate it every day and you... Oh, with love too, it's important. Right, the intention. I thank you for helping heal me. I love you, I love you, I love you. Well, you think about the intention mm. of the use and that you want to care for yourself, your family, loved ones, that you want it to be healing. And ideally a tincture is made over six, four to six weeks um, of you agitating it every day um, in that alcohol, like 80 proof vodka or brandy or... Um, or rum and uh, but she suggested with echinacea that really if you grow it yourself you can do the buds and then do you know you're doing that for like six weeks and then suddenly the the um, the flowers will seconds. come and then the leaves and then finally the root in the fall when the when it's died down and then you have this amazing tincture uh, that can help you with your colds through the and we'll stay tuned in three more minutes we'll be back with more healing tips to be healed excellent yeah wow thanks for